This material has been excerpted from the college television course, The Mechanical Universe, and re-edited specifically for use in the high school curriculum. The Mechanical Universe is funded by the Annenberg CPB Project, made possible by a grant from the National Science Foundation. California Institute of Technology in Pasadena. At the Kellogg Radiation Laboratory, Charles Barnes and his colleagues probe the cores of atoms. They look into the very hearts of the stars. And with the Caltech accelerators, they observe nature's fundamental forces. Everything from the outer edge of the most distant galaxy to the nucleus of an atom is subject to four fundamental forces. In a complicated and confusing world, there are, or so it would seem, many different forces at play. Nonetheless, scientists have sought to reduce these to one, or at the most, to a very few. Two fundamental forces dwell within the heart of the atom. Another knows no boundaries in the cosmos. And the fourth holds all matter together. Two of these fundamental forces are found only in the atomic nucleus. They are called the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force. The strong force binds protons and neutrons into nuclei. It's so powerful, it can overcome the natural repulsion of protons. And this power can be released in nuclear reactions. Indirectly, the strong nuclear force sets fires deep within the sun and within other stars as well. And yet, as powerful as this strong force is, its range is so small that 12 zeros follow the decimal point to express it numerically as a fraction of a centimeter. The weak force, the other fundamental force within the nucleus, has effects that are by no means weak. Though its effects are subtle, they're very obvious. In the violent death of massive stars, for example, or in the decay of radioactive isotopes. Yet, as much as is known about the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force, they remain somewhat mysterious. Hidden from the everyday world within the atomic nucleus, they remain among the innermost secrets of nature. The two other fundamental forces, equally wondrous and incredibly powerful, appear to be far less clandestine in nature, and they can be seen much closer to home. The most familiar fundamental force is gravity. Even in a commercial kitchen, the force of gravity accelerates mass. It came before the chicken and the egg. But before Newton's law, people didn't know very much about gravity. They knew something about it, 
that it made things fall, for example. But they didn't know gravity makes the moon fall, nor that gravity, first and foremost, is a fundamental force of the universe. A fundamental force and an attractive force. As an attractive force, gravity can be described in popular human terms. Not only does gravity get around quite a bit, from one end of the universe to the other, it has considerable influence on everything under the moon. Far more than that, gravity relates to everyone and to everything. In a way, gravity reaches out and shakes hands with the entire universe. With his law of universal gravitation, Isaac Newton explained the how and why of gravity in the universe. How it pulls objects to Earth, and at the same time, why objects such as the moon stay in the heavens. He explained gravity in terms of force. And even though force is measured by a unit called the Newton, which gives credit where credit's due, another Englishman shares credit for advancing science closer to the moon. He was Henry Cavendish, and he actually weighed the Earth. Chemist as well as physicist, he isolated a gas that became known as hydrogen. Cavendish was as reclusive as he was brilliant, most of his work was published almost a century after his death. Nonetheless, in his own quiet way, he weighed the Earth in 1798. He weighed the Earth by measuring the constant in Isaac Newton's universal law of gravity. Force is mass times acceleration expressed in kilogram meters per second squared, or Newtons. From the acceleration of a falling body and Newton's law of gravity, Cavendish already knew the mass of the Earth times g. To isolate mass from gravity, he had to measure the value of g. This could be done by finding the force between two known masses a known distance apart. It had to be done very carefully because the gravitational force between normal-sized masses is so very small. A bar, suspended by a delicate fiber, holds a mass at each end. Two larger masses are added. The gravitational force between these masses causes the bar to twist. By timing the swing of the bar, he could deduce the stiffness of the fiber, and thus the force. Switching the masses around makes the bar twist in the opposite direction to correct for asymmetries in the experiment. With this delicate experiment and a lot of care, Cavendish measured the gravitational constant and indirectly weighed the Earth. Weighing the Earth was an astounding accomplishment. But comparatively speaking, it's not truly shocking. The fourth fundamental force is electricity. Electricity seems the paradox of the forces. One minute exciting, raw, and even frightening in its power. The next, as ordinary as a pop-up toaster. No image strikes closer to the American landscape than this Philadelphian, harnessing electricity with a kite. Considering his unequaled accomplishments, editor and writer, inventor, politician, postmaster and statesman, philosopher, the wit and wisdom of his era, why has this image remained the most popular to this very day? because Ben Franklin was young America's first and foremost scientist. In the course of studying its effects, Franklin had the ingenious but not quite accurate notion that electricity was a kind of fluid, an electrical fluid contained in each ordinary body. If the body held too much of the fluid, Franklin said it was 
positively charged with electricity. A body with too little was negatively charged. Franklin's terms, positive charge and negative charge, remain vital in the vocabulary of electricity. But the significance of the electrical force goes deeper than his reflections. At its most fundamental level, electricity is the force between charges. When everything has equal amounts of positive and negative charge, matter is neutral. The atoms of all matter are comprised of electrically balanced positive and negative charges. The atom's nucleus is made of protons, which are positively charged and illustrated in red, and neutrons, which have no charge. Negatively charged electrons, shown here in blue, orbit the nucleus. The electrical force is equal to the constant K sub E, times the product of the charges the cubes, divided by the square of the distance between them. The formula for electricity is strikingly similar to the one for gravity. Gravitational force pulls the nine planets in orbit around the sun. The force is equal to minus a constant G times the product of the masses divided by the square of the distance between them. The natures of mass and charge are, for the most part, still unknown. But obviously, mass is something that applies to gravity, charge something that applies to electricity. Since mass is always positive, Gravity always attracts. Charge, however, can be either positive or negative. A positive and negative charge will attract. Two positive charges will repel, as will two negative charges. Otherwise, just as their formula states symbolically, gravity and electricity are so much alike that an atom with a little rearranging looks almost like a little solar system. When scientists discovered that two of nature's four fundamental forces are almost the same, a logical question arose. Could there be one force that alone explained the fundamental nature of everything in the universe? Thus began the ongoing journey toward the single unified theory. And for the last 20 years of his life, Albert Einstein wheeled along this difficult path of research. Even though Einstein never reached his goal, the search continues and the findings suggest great promise. Found in the debris of nuclear collisions, these fragments suggest a deep underlying connection between the electric force and the weak nuclear force. Nevertheless, outside the realm of ongoing scientific research, the world of common experience continues to be governed by ordinary gravity and electricity. Electricity binds atoms and molecules into liquids and solids that create everything from the most complex organisms to the most ordinary table salt. Although ordinary matter is electrically neutral, the atoms deep within can be both negatively and positively charged. Salt illustrates how these charges can hold matter together. Salt crystals are bound by the electric force between positively charged sodium and negatively charged chlorine ions. Electricity, in countless forms, is a fundamental force that constantly springs to life. For instance, the spring action of a metal object is actually an electrical process. Metal ions which are positively charged are glued together by electrons which are negatively charged. Stretching the metal pulls the ions apart. 
but the electrons force them back together. Another form of the electrical force is friction. When two objects come into contact, their positive and negative charges interact, and the surfaces are, at least temporarily, bonded together. The strong force and the weak force dwell within the nucleus of the atom. Awesome, but comparatively mysterious. The other two are better known and seemingly more pervasive. Gravity is the most important force between objects that are very far apart. And the atoms and molecules of all common matter are bound together by the force of electricity. The weak force, the strong force, gravity, and electricity. These are the fundamental forces of nature. This material is based upon work supported by the National Science Foundation under grant number SPE 8318420. Any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation.